This is Unit 8, Video 5. In this video, we will just follow up on the previous discussion about the second way of preparing a solution, and that is through a dilution. So we've seen this before, but what we're doing is we're using a concentrated solution to produce one that's less concentrated, that's more dilute. And the way we're going to do it is we're going to measure an amount of the solution, the original solution, the concentrated solution, and then dilute that down. Now the amount of moles in here, this will be the key point, the amount of moles in here will all go into the new solution. Will go be the same thing as the, uh, the, the new solution, the one that we will be diluting. And, and the moles will be equal. So the big thing here is moles are the same. And that's the idea. So let's go ahead and work out a problem that does exactly that. So in this case, what we have is we have to dilute an original solution. So here we have a question that asks how many milliliters of a 12 molar solution of HCl must be diluted to 500 mils in order to obtain a 0.5 molar solution. So our original, our stock solution is 12 molar. Our final one is 0.5 molar. Now we need 500, uh, or rather 500 milliliters of the 0.5 molar. So what we'll do is it'll go through moles. So let's find out how many moles we need in our dilute solution. Remember molarity is moles over liter, liters. And so we'll solve for moles. Let's do moles is molarity times liters. What we've got is 0.5 is our new molarity and 500 mils is how much we want of it. So we've got 0.5 times 500. Now remember we have to be in liters, so this would be 0.5 liters. So this is our liters, this is our molarity. So this is simply 0 0.5 liters. So if we multiply these two numbers together, 0.5 times 0.5 gets you 0.25, 0 0.25 moles. So our dilute solution contains 0.25 moles. And the question is, well, how much of the concentrated solution do we take to make the dilute solution? And to answer that, we should answer how much of the concentrated solution will give us 0.25 moles. So we have the concentration. So we're going to do a molarity problem here as well. Molarity is moles over liters. In this case, how many mils? So we're going to solve for liters of our second solution. So this would be liters is moles over molarity. So our moles will be 0.25. And our original molarity is 12. Divide by 12 molar. If we divide 0.25 by 12, let's go ahead and do that. we should get ourselves 0 0.0208. Now this would be liters, which in milliliters should be, move it three times, 20.8 milliliters. And this is actually our final answer. So we will need to pull out 20.8 milliliters of the stock solution. If we go back up, so this is our stock solution. So this essentially will be 20.8 8 mils gets pulled out of there, gets placed into this new dilute solution, and then diluted down to a volume of 500. And that's exactly what we want here. So hopefully that makes sense. Now there is an easier way of doing this. In fact, there's an equation that uh, you can use to do the same thing. And this equation is M1V1 equals M2V2. Now because molarity is moles over liters, moles is molarity times liters. What you've got here is you've got molarity times liters of one solution, this gives you moles, equals molarity times volume of second solution, this gives you moles as well. And because we said the moles are the same on both in both solutions, that's how we can actually use this equation. And here it says uh, you can use either milliliters or you can use liters in this equation, which is nice, because if you use, no matter what you use, they cancel out cancel each other out. So you can actually use milliliters. So let's do the same problem now using uh, this equation. So again, the same exact problem. What we've got is we've got M1 V1 equals M2 V2. So we'll say our M1 V1, our concentrated solution, is our solution 1. And our dilute solution is our solution 2. So notice that the dilute solution has a molarity of 0.5 and a volume of 500. And our concentrated
concentrated solution has a molarity of 12 and a volume of x. We don't know what the volume x is. And we simply solve for x. So we're essentially multiplying 0.5 times 500 and dividing by 12. And if you do that, let's double check. We should get ourselves 20.8 milliliters. So this is the same thing, but much quicker. Uh, feel free to use this dilution equation uh, whenever you have a dilution problem like this. Last thing we'll talk about then is the fact that some compounds produce multiple ions in solution. This is especially true of salts or ionic compounds. So sodium chloride, for example, because it's composed of two ions, will give you twice as many ions in solution as you put in of the compound. That's because it dissociates, sodium chloride dissociates into two ions. If you have something like calcium chloride, that will dissociate into three ions, a calcium and two chloride ions. Um, and something like sucrose, which is not an ionic compound, does not dissociate at all. So whatever the molarity of this is, if this was three molar, you'll get three molar in solution. In the case of salt, if this is three molar, you actually get six molar ions, six molarity for ions in solution. If you have three molar here for calcium chloride, you get yourself nine molarity for the ions. So you simply double or triple however many ions they produce. So we'll do this last problem uh, in, in view of that. So find the molarity of chloride ions in solution when 50 mils of 0.10 molar barium chloride is mixed with 15 mils of a 0.2 molar hydrochloric acid solution. So this is a mixing, this is a, the most difficult problem we've done so far. You're essentially mixing these two solutions together. You're mixing the solution 50 mils of this with 15 mils of this. Now, in the end, we need the molarity. And the molarity, again, is moles over liters. So what we need is we need the moles, the total moles that came into the solution, and then the total liters that came into the solution. Well, since we have 50 mils of one solution and 15 mils of the other, our total would be 65 milliliters. That would be our total solution, which is actually 0.065 liters, 0.065 liters. And so that can actually go down in here. Now to get the moles, to get the top portion, we have to find out how many moles of chloride come from both of these solutions. So we'll have to do a little moles uh, problem. So for barium chloride, here's our barium chloride solution. Remember, moles is molarity times liters. So in our case, our molarity is 0.10, our liters is 0 0.050. So we got 0.10 molarity times 0.50 rather 0.050, not 0.50 liters, but 0.050. 50 mils into liters is 0.050 liters. So what you get yourself is 0 0.0050 moles of barium chloride. Now if you take a look, barium chloride has two chloride ions, which means this gives us double or 0 0.010 moles of Cl minus. Hopefully that makes sense. Since you got yourself, for every barium chloride unit, you get two chlorides. You simply double this number. This number got doubled. Now, our second solution, which is HCl, just produces one chloride. So to get the uh, HCl, we simply get, again, moles is molarities times liters. In this case, our molarity is 0.2. Our liters is 0 0.015. And this actually gets us, you're essentially doubling the, uh, so 0 0.030, except uh, you're moving into left one, so 0 0.0030 moles of HCl. And because you get one mole of HCl for one mole of chloride, you get one chloride for one HCl, this will be equal to 0 0.0030 moles of Cl minus. So now we have two of these. We'll put them together and divided by our main liters. So this is our total moles. So our total moles in this case will be 0 0.013. Our total liters we decided was 0 0.065. 
and go ahead and divide those two numbers. 0 0.013 divided by 0 0.065. And our final molarity is actually 0.2. This is chloride ion. Now, since we have two sig figs, no, we only have one sig fig. This gives us one sig fig, so just 0.2, which interestingly enough matched our uh, solution here. All right, and that is how you do a little dilution problem uh, with your. If you have two solutions, you're mixing them together. You have to keep account of the actual ion that you're being asked about. So go ahead and try. Stop the video. Go ahead and try problem nine, which is the same idea, and we'll practice a lot of this in class.